It's been over 10 years since the last space shuttle flight, and now more than ever, NASA's rushing to finalize preparations for the imminent launch of the next space plane into orbit. Recently, NASA cooperated with Sierra Space. The agency's actively engaged in conducting crucial tests on Dream Chaser just unveiled numerous intriguing developments. How exactly is NASA and Sierra Space conducting these tests on its new space plane, and when can we expect its launch? Let's explore these questions in today's episode of Alpha Tech. After many years of work, the first reusable spacecraft Dream Chaser from Sierra Space is almost ready to fly. Sierra Space's shuttle-like Dream Chaser has been put through its paces at a powerful NASA vibration facility that mimics conditions during launch and atmospheric re-entry. Officials set on February 1st ahead of its first planned first flight to the ISS this year. The first space plane of a planned line, Tenacity, was completed at the company's factory in Louisville, Colorado in November, and then shipped to NASA's Neil Armstrong test facility in Sandusky, Ohio. There, it was exposed to the Mechanical Vibration Facility, the world's most powerful spacecraft shaker system. NASA said on X, It's the only place in the world like it where we can fly to ensure spacecraft are ready for launch. Now, we're putting at Sierra Space Co. Dream Chaser space plane and its Shooting Star cargo module through the paces at NASA's Neil Armstrong testing facility. This is one of the crucial tests that will determine whether the spacecraft can begin its mission or not. It holds significant importance for Sierra Space, as they have also updated their status on February 2nd. Today, the Sierra Space teams arrived at a profound milestone in our amazing journey, one of audacious dreaming and tenacious doing. We are now living in the orbital age. Fantastic. The first test probably went quite well, but to ensure safety and efficiency during launch and re-entry into Earth's atmosphere, the first Dream Chaser named Tenacity will need additional time for fine-tuning and further testing. Next, it will be placed in a huge in-ground vacuum chamber where it will experience the ultra-low and high temperatures of space, as well as low ambient pressure. We are really excited that this year we enter orbital operations for NASA. It is a year that we change how we connect Earth and space, Sierra Space's CEO Tom Weiss told reporters at a press event where the spaceship was presented in launch configuration, made it to its shooting star cargo module. There is no exact flight schedule for Tenacity yet, but in a NASA comment, they somewhat revealed a time frame for the first launch of the spacecraft. This testing marks progress toward Dream Chaser's first uncrewed demonstration flight to the space station later this year as part of NASA's commercial resupply program. The schedule is delayed by more than six months from the initial timeline we knew, which was supposed to be in April this year, due to waiting to observe the performance of the Vulcan rocket in its maiden launch. Now that Vulcan successfully launched, it's unclear why the Dream Chaser's flight schedule has been pushed back. But no matter what, it has traversed nearly the most challenging path to come closer to the spacecraft's first launch after almost a decade of construction by Sierra Space. Dream Chaser's first mission will be extremely important for Sierra Space because it'll open a novel stage with other key missions of this vehicle in the future. The aforementioned SNC Demo-1 mission will be just one of many missions in the Commercial Resupply Services 2 CRS-2 contract that NASA awarded to Sierra Space in 2016. In this contract, Sierra Space will have to perform at least seven unmanned flights to carry cargo to the ISS. After producing the first cargo prototype, Sierra Space is aiming to produce the next prototype, the most notable of which will be the DC-200 prototype for crewed missions. That will be big strides for Sierra Space, helping them officially become one of the few organizations currently capable of sending humans into orbit. It'll be able to directly compete with crew-carrying vehicles such as Orion, Starliner, and especially SpaceX's Dragon. Honestly, Dream Chaser is NASA's most anticipated candidate. It's a mini space shuttle that brings a clear distinction from all capsule vehicles, including the SpaceX Dragon that NASA is currently utilizing. Being a quarter of the size of the space shuttle orbiter, the Dream Chaser has the advantage of being able to use any runway long enough to accommodate a large passenger plane. Its launch site, landing site, vehicle configuration, mission duration, and other characteristics can be adjusted to meet the needs of diverse users. Because it does not use highly toxic fuel or require specialized infrastructure, it can land on aircraft runway pretty much anywhere. This offers lots of advantages. For example, by getting payloads and astronauts returning from space to their final destinations quickly. The ability to land essentially anywhere on the planet has clear benefits for international scientific collaboration. But more importantly, 
When the company completes work on its human-rated variant of the spacecraft, it could be a potentially life-saving capability if a medical emergency necessitates a crew member be transported back to Earth as quickly as possible. Furthermore, the general trajectory during re-entry enhances the overall safety of the mission. It reduces the forces exerted on the crew and payloads, ensuring a smoother and more comfortable ride for those on board. This is particularly important for delicate scientific experiments or sensitive cargo that require careful handling and protection during the return to Earth. The ability to execute a general trajectory during atmospheric re-entry aligns with Dream Chaser's objectives of providing a safe and reliable means of transportation for both crewed and uncrewed missions. It enables a controlled and controlled descent, minimizing the risk of structural or thermal stresses that could compromise the integrity of the spacecraft. Dream Chaser's runway landings enable a faster turnaround for subsequent missions. Once landed, Dream Chaser can be quickly prepared for its next mission minimizing downtime and maximizing mission frequency. This agility and efficiency make Dream Chaser an attractive option for rapid cargo resupply missions and time-sensitive scientific experiments. Sierra Space says Dream Chaser will be able to deliver up to 5.5 tons and return an unspecified amount. More importantly though, Dream Chaser will use a large berthing port and have substantial space and volume to store its cargo likely making it far easier for Sierra Space to take full advantage of its theoretical performance. For NASA, the more a spacecraft's performance can be exploited, the cheaper a given cargo delivery effectively becomes. Despite all these advantages, there is a reality that Dream Chaser is still a loser compared to SpaceX's Dragon. So far, Dragon still remains the only spacecraft in the world capable of routinely returning a significant amount of cargo to Earth. While Dream Chaser is still reeling from its pile of yet-to-occur benefits, Dragon is set to once again take astronauts into orbit for NASA, named Crew-8, raising the total number of astronauts flown on the Dragon family to 46, including private missions. NASA has announced the targeted launch date for this mission being February 22nd. This is more specific than the last update we got, which identified late February as the target. Crew-8 will employ the Crew Dragon capsule Endeavour, which already has four astronaut missions to the ISS under its belt. The spacecraft also flew the Demo-2 test mission in 2020, SpaceX's first-ever crewed flight, Crew-2 in 2021, Crew-6 in 23, and the private Axe-1 mission in April 2022. Crew-8's Falcon 9 rocket, by contrast, will be flying for the first time. The booster recently completed stage testing and will undergo final assembly in the SpaceX hangar at Launch Complex 39A ahead of the Dragon and Falcon 9 mate, NASA officials wrote in an update on Wednesday. Once all rocket and spacecraft system checkouts are complete, the integrated stack will be rolled to the pad and raised to vertical for a static fire test prior to launch. So, is the robust development of Dream Chaser a concern for the lucrative contracts of Dragon? Certainly not. SpaceX has held a monopoly position for quite a while, stating that Dream Chaser still has a considerable amount of time before it can transport cargo to the ISS and even longer before obtaining crew certification. Additionally, we cannot overlook the issue of cost. Although Dream Chaser promises a reusable and cost-effective product compared to traditional space shuttles, there is still no specific pricing information available for Dream Chaser at this point. This presents an advantage for SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft. That's all for today's episode. Hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments section below. Your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you next time. Bye.